This is mystery. We're in Knaresborough in Yorkshire. Prepare to be petrified. And on today's show... How did one man save the water supply of an entire village? And what sticky situation did this man get into underneath his house? And this is Shiara. Today we're at Mother Shipton's cave in Yorkshire and later in the show we're going to show you how to petrify your teddy bear. Don't you do that every morning when you see it, Steve? Thank you very much, Shiara. If you paid attention, you'd realise that I don't mean that kind of petrified. Well, what do you mean? What I mean is... Actually, it's too hard to explain. You're going to have to wait and see. Well, I wish you'd get on with things. We've got lots to see today. We have got a lot of things to see, actually. We're going to be going to somewhere where it's said that wishes can come true. But first of all, Shiara, I want you to answer me this. How does one man save the water supply of an entire village? I don't know. How does one man save the water supply of an entire village? It's not a joke. It's our first mystery. In the past couple of weeks, the residents of Swithenham Village had noticed that their taps were running more and more slowly. No matter how much Mr Smith turned the taps, the water just wouldn't come out any faster. Eventually, the residents had had enough and they decided to do something about it. Hello? Yes, water board, please. The water board blamed leaks in the underground pipes for the problem and told the village residents they would send in their experts to look for a different water source. The experts were armed with the latest high-tech equipment designed to locate water, but they couldn't find a new water source anywhere and the residents were getting desperate. Mr Witherspoon, an elderly gentleman from the village, was on his way to the bus stop where an interesting conversation caught his attention. You know they still haven't fixed the water problem yet? It's terrible, isn't it? Yes, and do you know those experts haven't found any water anywhere? I know. Do you know it took me half an hour to run the bath this morning? It took me half an hour to fill the kettle. Mr Witherspoon had heard enough and he hurried away. Hello, is that the water board? It's Mr. Witherspoon from Swithenham. I've got some good news. I've found water. Yes, that's right. Just outside the village. Within days, the water in the village was back to full strength. Hold on a minute. Hmm? How did Mr. Witherspoon succeed when all the other experts failed? Tell me. Well, I could tell you, Shara, but all good things come to those who wait. Finish waiting? Yeah. OK, I'll tell you. Thanks. Amazingly, Mr Witherspoon didn't need any fancy equipment. He found the water using two rods. It was a skill called dowsing, which he had learnt from his father when he was just a boy. With us now is Master Dowser Richard West to tell us what dowsing is. Richard. Dowsing's a way of using our senses to find things that are hidden. We can use it for all kinds of things, but in this case we're using it to find water. Uh, so, how exactly do you do it then, Richard? You hold the rods in front of you, uh -huh. concentrate on what you want to find, and when you cross water, the rods will cross. Wow! Listen, you don't have a spare set, do you? Because like, I'd really like to have a go, and I think I might be a bit of a natural. Yeah, sure, but you're going to have cool. to concentrate. OK. Yes, you are. You are going to have to concentrate, so I think maybe we should pop a blindfold on you. Just really? To, yeah, just to add to the fun, help you uh, concentrate. Just like that. There you go. So it's sure about this. once around for luck, and off you go. All the best. So, uh, Richard, uh, how did Mr Witherspoon do it? Well, there are many schools of thought as to how dowsing works, but I believe that the electrical field of the body is affected by the surrounding areas and things we can't see. Mm -hmm. um, small electrical impulses in your hands move the rods so they don't move themselves. So it's actually us moving the rods? Oh, yes. I'm not sure I'm doing it right, Steve. So, um, is that kind of how Mr Witherspoon did it? Yeah, that's kind of how Mr Witherspoon did it. When he crossed the water, his rods crossed, and that's where the waterboard dug. So, can anyone try dowsing? Is Shiara actually going to find any water? All right, Shiara. <laughs> Guys, I'm still not getting anything. Guys! Yes, anybody can douse. It's just like playing the piano. Some people have to practice more than others. 
Well, there you have it then. Okay, mystery solved. Thank you, Richard. Um, do you know what, actually? I fancy having a go at this dowsing lark myself, uh, once Yara's finished, of course. In fact, I can't see her anywhere. Do you think she's all right? Shiara? Shiara! Well, I'm concentrating really hard, but I'm just not getting anything. <laughs> Steve, have you ever wished for something you really wanted and had it come true? Yeah, a few times. It doesn't happen often, though. Well, this is the right place to be. This is Mother Shipton's cave, and strange things can happen here. Mother Shipton was born here over 500 years ago and was famous throughout all of Yorkshire for her ability to see into the future, and all the locals thought she was a bit of a witch. She not only foretold historical events like the Great Fire of London and the defeat of the Spanish Armada, but it's said that she could see amazingly far into the future. In fact, she was so good, it's said that she predicted the invention of steel ships, cars, planes, and even the telephone. Legend has it that Mother Shipton put a spell on this well to make wishes come true. What you've got to do is put your right hand into the water, then make your wish and throw your money into the well. But you've got to make sure that your hand dries naturally, otherwise your wish might wash away. Well, I've got my coin here and I'm going to give it a go. A wish for loads of lovely chocolate. I hope that comes true. Wish for chocolate, eh? Well, well, well. Get it? Well. Your jokes are getting worse. Get it? Worse. And here is the most mysterious place of all. This is the petrifying well. Well, it's not that scary. It's just a waterfall. Uh, I've told you before, I don't mean that kind of petrified. And this is no ordinary waterfall. If you look closely, you can see everyday objects like hats, teddy bears, even an umbrella that have quite literally turned to stone. Oh, you mean that sort of petrified, but how does it happen? Well, the water comes from an underground lake and it has such a high mineral content that over a period of time, it builds up to form a new layer of rock. It can take five months to turn an object the size of a teddy bear into stone. An umbrella can take up to a year and a half. And you know, a few of the objects have been hanging here since the 18th century. Wow, mystery solved then. I guess you could say we've left no stone unturned. Your jokes are so awful, I can't bear them. <laughs> Actually, so dreadful, you don't deserve any of this chocolate. I don't believe it. That's amazing. My wish has come true. No, not really. Just didn't take a genius to realise you were going to wish for chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Sarah Hakeney and I want to tell you the mysterious story about my grandpa's disappearing watch. In 1990, me and my family were visiting my uncle on the Isle of Man. We set off for a walk at 11 o'clock. My grandpa checked his watch to see how long we had until lunchtime. We decided we'd head over the bridge where we'd stop for something to eat. As grandpa got to the other side of the bridge, something made him check his watch again. As he pulled back his sleeve, he noticed something was missing. His watch had disappeared. He looked around and retraced his steps, but the watch was nowhere to be seen. I have a theory what happened that morning. This bridge is known as the Fairy Bridge. Local people believe that fairies live here, and when you pass over the bridge, you have to say hello to them out of courtesy. If you don't, they will steal something from you. That morning we had all said hello to the fairies, apart from my grandpa who refused because he thought it was superstitious nonsense. So, if the legend is true, it would be no surprise to see that grandpa's watch had been taken by the fairies, never to be seen again. <laughs> bizarre. I tell you what, fairies may be small, but it just goes to show, don't mess with them because they're tough. Yeah, a bit like me. Yeah, just like you, not. Okay, so Mars, Alec, well, you've heard of a coal mine, yeah? Yeah. And you've heard of a gold mine? Yeah. But have you ever heard of any other type of mine? I have, actually. That's mine. Oh, very funny, but that's not what I meant. Take a look at this. Stephen Jones lives in a small northern town where he works as the manager of a local shop. At 5.30 it was closing time and he was about to go home for the weekend. 
The following morning, Stephen got up nice and early. Unfortunately, the weather was absolutely awful. It rained constantly, so he decided to give his cellar a spring clean. Whilst tidying up a corner, he noticed that the walls had become particularly damp and slimy in parts. At first, he thought it might have been caused by the rain, so he picked up an old brush and began to scrub. As he scrubbed, he began to realise that there was more to this damp patch than he first thought. It just wouldn't disappear. On closer inspection, he noticed that the dampness was not only staining the walls, a black, sticky, tar-like substance was oozing from the cracks. Intrigued, he scraped some of it off and carefully scooped it into an old jar to inspect it in the daylight. What on earth could it be? Stephen was so intrigued that he decided to call in the experts. One by one, they visited the cellar and took samples to laboratories. After numerous tests, it was discovered that the sinister substance was, in fact, a type of treacle. Treacle? Yeah, treacle, you know, sticky stuff comes in tins. Well, the weird goings-on caused so much interest that the local authorities sent down their builders to have a better look. So what happened then? Well, they chipped away at the rock for a few metres and then they discovered something totally amazing. Unbelievably, Stephen's house had been built on top of an undiscovered cave and the contents of this mysterious cavern were beginning to seep into Stephen's cellar. But that's not the only story of its kind. It has been documented that there are over 80 of these treacle caves all over the country, and many of them are in secret locations. It has been said that they go back as far as the 17th century. Legend has it that when a seam of treacle was discovered, it would have been carefully opened up to expose treacle rock. The walls of this cave glisten with patches of the sickly sweet substance. So much so, you could almost suggest that this cave is a sort of treacle mine. You are joking, right? No, there really are loads of references to treacle mines. It's said that millions of years ago, in the same way that dead trees were compressed in the ground to form coal, wild sugar was compressed to form a treacle bearing rock, like this. Well, that's all very well, Shiara, but in case you haven't noticed, we don't have sugar cane in this country. Yes, I know, but everything that was mined, including coal, started its life at the time of the dinosaurs. And in those days, vast areas of the country were filled with a plant very similar to sugar cane. And these plants were as big as giant trees and over millions of years were compressed into a treacle-like substance. What absolute nonsense! Yes, well, there's another theory that comes from folklore that says treacle was the name given by locals for a shiny substance called hematite, which oozed from underground rock. Well, that sounds a bit more believable, but to be honest with you, Shiara, I don't buy it. Well, I do. <laughs> Steve, we've seen some really cool mysteries today, like the treacle mines, and we've even discovered a way of finding water. Don't forget, we've also seen how to turn everyday objects into stone. That was cool. Well, I think I've been working really hard today, so I'm going to go off and eat that lovely bar of chocolate. Hey, hang on a minute. Hang on. I bought you that chocolate. Aren't you going to share that with me? No. Here's 10p. Go and wish for your own. Hang on, but Shiara, I thought that we were really good friends and, and that, in fact, our friendship is as solid as a rock. Do you get it? Rock? <laughs> yes, and for that really poor excuse for a joke, you're definitely not getting any chocolates. And you can give me the 10p back. See you later. Bye. Hey, hang on. Uh, Shiara? Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, Shiara. Wait. On our next show, what is strange about this normal-looking village in Dorset? And what unearthly event single-handedly catapulted an entire city into darkness? Darkness.